evenodd.org podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Odd Data Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, as always, the, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, Adam Higgins, the Odd Dad Out. And this is the show where I ramble and, and rant and I, and I get, I, I dispense all of the, whatever the hell is going on in my head. And I tell you about some podcasts that I like and I make fun of somebody in the news that's just really dumb. Because I'm, I, you know, I just, I'm, I'm, it's a well rounded show. <laughs> just like, it's a variety show. Yeah. So, how you doing out there in internet land? It's, it's just a wonderful time, isn't it? Just wonderful time to just wonderful. <laughs> all right. Before I, I jump into all of my, my randomness and crazy and I don't know what the hell I'm going to do this week. Um, I'm going to throw in a, a little, uh, mini, uh, totally out of order recommended listening. Recommended listening. <laughs> so I, along with about a bajillion other podcasts are now part of Molehole Talk Radio. And if that sounds familiar, yes, that is coming from Chris the Mole Man of the once the Couch Potato Files and then the Mole Hole Show and the I don't know what he's calling it this we uh, it's the Mole Man Show currently, I believe. He he kind of Chris is a very inconsistent guy. He cannot make up his mind and he likes to tinker and he likes to play with stuff. And he's put a lot of shows together. I think there's there's 25, 30 some odd shows he has brought together. Uh Obviously, the Mole Man Show, uh, Mike Jolitz, with both the regular Mike Jolitz show and the Big Big Show, uh, Gareth's Random Ramblings, Epic Film Guys, BSP, The Idiot Syncrasy Files, uh, Afterburn Seven Thirty Nine. Uh, fuck, there's there's so I shake my head with Lisa and Sam. Uh, there's some classic bro rons on there. Smoke and Mirrors. He's doing a new show. Uh, I, I, Fuck, I'm blanking all the names. He's got so much on there and I don't have the whole thing and the whole schedule in front of me, but you can check all of these shows out. It's basically just a big streaming radio service, uh, you know, big online radio channel and it's at moleholebroadcast.com. Jump over there. It, it's, it's, there's so much over there. So much. <laughs> just, I, I can't, like I said, I can't even get all the shows together. There's like some, 30 some odd shows, but you know, some guys like, uh, Chris and Mike and, and Daryl that do multiple shows. Uh, there's, there's a ton. There's just so much crap in there. I can't even, yeah, I totally said that. I can't even, but check it out. Molehole talk radio at moleholebroadcast.com. <laughs> Okay, now that I got that part out, <laughs> I just needed to get it in there because I, I totally would have forgotten it if I left it for the end of the show. And I do have a whole other thing later on, but th- I, I needed to get that out of the way. So if you looked at the episode title, you may have noticed what the hell are brown skies. So uh, long story short, it's still monsoon season. <laughs> uh, I, I talked about it a few weeks ago. You know, the monsoons hit before I went on vacation. While I was on vacation and literally Monday, I finally got around to cleaning out my van from vacation. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, man, I, you know, my, my whole, the front of my van was still covered in, in all of the giant Texas bugs that you hit driving so much along the highways. And I finally got up and went to the car wash and did all that stuff and vacuumed everything out and got all the trash. And it was kind of cool because my car wash that I go to kind of changed up their thing. They've got, these nice little racks of towels and stuff there. So you can wipe down your interior and all the, you know, all that fun jazz. Cause you know, 
cleaning out your car is totally fun. They even have like a little like air compressor gun thing there now. It was kind of cool. It was like, I'd never seen this with this shit. And you could like blast all the crevices and shit out. It was kind of cool. Yes, I realize I'm excited about a new gadget at the car wash. Uh, yeah, I have no life. <laughs> but all that aside, like finally go wash the car. It doesn't look awful. You know, get it all vacuumed out. The boys are like handing me trash, doing all this stuff. It was a productive afternoon with me and the boys. I forget what the hell else we were doing. I think we were having, we had to go to the store. We had to go, we had to do stuff. It was a general purpose running errands kind of day. And it was like, hell, let's pick up, let's go wash the car while we're at. Of course, Monday night, after I've gotten the car nice and clean and shiny, and if you follow me, and I, and I say this all the time now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know what happened. <laughs> A gigantic dust storm rolled through <laughs> and it hit us really hard. And out here in Surprise, we didn't get it nearly as bad. It's not like the last dust storm that hit. You know, The last time we had a big storm that hit us, we basically had a big thunderstorm coming from the east and we had a big dust storm coming from the west. And how this happened exactly, I'm not sure, because physics and weather patterns and I don't know. But basically how that rolled through. And we got a big dust storm, pretty much got, and then it was a huge, you know, thunderstorm rolled in. Um, this time they rolled in standard procedure, <laughs> standard procedure for dust storms is big dust storm rolls in in one direction and just moves as a wall, you know, maybe, maybe a few miles behind it, followed by gigantic thunderstorm and one big wave. And last time the damage wasn't nearly as bad the last time because the storm, the systems were kind of opposing each other. This time, one big massive fuck you to everybody in the whole valley. And it was kind of funny because we were just sitting there. My wife and I were just sitting there on Monday night watching TV and she looks at her phone and like, because she checks the weather. I don't, she has a thing about the weather sometimes, <laughs> but she looks at her phone. He's like, Oh, like this looks like we're going to have a big storm hit later. And then we kind of looked out the window. It's like, it's looking awfully brown outside. And I looked out the window and all you, it's just a brown haze everywhere. Like we are in the middle of the dust and start looking and realize it's blowing like crazy. I will say 100%. We have excellent sound insulation in our house. <laughs> our sound insulation, you know, for all you do here, you know, that what makes it onto the recording planes and shit like that. If I were outside, it would be like deafening. You know, if I walked outside with the mic and recorded the sounds of the atmospheric noise of the planes, it's damn loud outside. Inside, not that bad. Um, but we go, I go outside and it is just wind is whipping shit around it. And Monday is trash day. So some people's dumpsters are still on the curb and some of them are getting blown down the street. And of course, I had to hop out and shoot a little video on Instagram of, holy shit, look at this shit going around, hair flying everywhere, all this, look, it's brown. <laughs> you know, like, like I said, that's not a filter, it's really that brown out. <laughs> um, but just, it was just crazy. And then, of course, you know, about an hour after the dust came through, the thunderstorms rolled in. And again, it's, it's all coming from the east side. We're on the far west side. So most of it, central Phoenix gets hit really hard. And the dust storms and the, everything that hits, when it hits Phoenix, it just decimates Phoenix. And, you know, by the time it gets to us, it's much lower. And I realized in my neighborhood, we're deep enough into the neighborhood. There's so many other houses and everything that it, it's severely reduced even where our house is. So as, as crazy as wind and rain and all of it is in my neighborhood, like by my house, if I go like two blocks out to the more open road, the winds are much heavier, you know, go out to bell road, which is the main road out in my area. It's much more open and it, the wind is just screaming through and then you see the dust wall coming down the street, all that stuff, you know, trees getting uprooted, 
Granted, after the last three big storms like this, there's not a lot of wussy trees left that are going to get uprooted. <laughs> it's all the really tough trees because all the really weak trees have already been turned up. But the ground is soft from all the rain. So there's that, you know, back and forth. But yeah, it it hit and it hit pretty quick. And oddly enough, at least here, the storm wasn't as bad. In Phoenix, 120,000 people were without power. And like Phoenix and more of the, the east side area, there were like, I said, I think they said 120,000 people uh, lost power. power. You know, power lines being downed, trees getting uprooted, you know, all that craziness. It happened, you know, it's monsoon season. <laughs> you know, where I was... And again, if you, if you saw the video, I would, you know, outside taking videos of the lightning, it's really hard to video lightning, by the way, because, you know, light balance and the way cameras work and all that electrical disturbance and yeah, but you know, go outside and Hey, it's raining and lightning. And I love watching the, the lightning in the desert. It just, the way it's, it like races across the sky. It's really pretty. You know, it's, it's a point of contention with my wife because she she appreciates the lightning here, but she likes the skies in te- in, in South Texas better, where the cl- it's constantly under cloud cover because of the humidity. And like every morning, it's cloudy. It just is, and, and so every morning it's cloudy, and then you get up, and then it, it slowly burns off or whatever. But when it the clouds are so low. That when there's lightning, you just see, you know, light flashes in the sky. You don't see like racing lightning bolts through the sky or, or lightning strikes. and th- You don't see a lot of that. Here it's all lightning strikes, racing the big, like, you know, the fingers of lightning spreading through the sky. It looks really great. The stuff you paint, the stuff that makes, you know, artistic uh, things. That's what the sky is here. So I'm out there taking pictures and videos and Instagramming stuff because I don't usually get to Instagrammy stuff because I'm boring, and I, and I'm getting this stuff because I don't weather events are are good Instagram fodder for me because I appreciate it and like, hey look it's fucking storm, but I'm doing all that and yeah fun time and then of course you know storm rolls through and, you know rain rain rain. A uh, good thing I mowed the yard. All those fun. T- <laughs> At this point, the storms have got me to where I have to mow my yard. Otherwise, I'm totally boned. <laughs> but it just sucks because like, man, I just fucking washed the car today. And then dust and rain and shit. I'm like, mm, damn it. But that's not the only thing going on. Hard transition there. I've I've talked about the weather so much in the last couple of weeks. Like, yep, nope, I've spent too much time on the weather already fuck the weather right now. Let's hope it it clean it it clears up because this is the last week of summer vacation. And it I realize it's not going to we're probably going to have a couple more weeks of this anyway. But next week the boys go back to school. And so we've got all of the damn school supplies all over the place. My mother-in-law sends us school supplies cuz she's a teacher and she can get you know access to everything. And just by merit of being grandma, she always wants to help out with the boys' school supply stuff. I don't know how much she's going to want to help when there's four boys in school, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But, you know, we've got shelves and boxes and bags of all these damn school supplies. And I'm pretty sure I said it last year, school supply lists suck. I seriously don't understand why my kid needs to show up with six packages or six tubs of Clorox wipes. Why my kid needs two packages of pens and four reams of paper and of computer paper. I don't get like, And I, I understand the idea of, okay, well the kids individually bring more than they necessarily would need to make up for those kids who don't. Well, if you made the lit, like the kids who can't, bring all the supplies. If you made the list applicable to one person, parents wouldn't be so pissed off about having spent $300 on school supplies. It's not necessary. Really? One of my boys has to take five, five boxes of pencils. 
No. <laughs> Even in like third or fourth grade, you're not going to use five boxes of pencils unless you're literally sitting there snapping them. That's 50 pencils on a conservative box on crap pencils. And we don't send crap pencils because <laughs> my wife is a pencil snob. <laughs> but I just, oh my God. I'm so tired of these stupid lists every year. It's so much crap. We've got an entire box full of uh, hand sanitizer that we've got to send. All this crap. I'm so... School supply lists are... You know what? Fuck it. It's right here in front of me. Let's look. First grade list. Three packs of erasers. Four box. Why the fuck does he need four 24 count boxes of crayons? 10 glue sticks and a glue bottle because, you know, why not? He needs like 10 different colors of folders, you know, four highlighters, uh, six dry erase, six packs of dry erase markers. What the hell does a first grader need six packs of dry erase markers? Just for him. If every kid, say it's like 20 kids in a class. That's a, that's, I'm being stupid. It's 120 packages. Of dry erase markers. That's unnecessary. Unnecessary. One box of band-aids makes sense. Fine. But it's just... Ugh. Three boxes of, of tissues. Three boxes of baby wipes. Kind of makes sense. You know... Just so much crap. You know, our... our, our other son is going into fourth grade. He needs four boxes of pencils. He needs just a bunch of fucking folders, bunch of fucking markers, more paper, five boxes of, of Clorox wipes. Just no, it's too much crap. It makes no sense for one kid to need all of that stuff. And it's a fight. It just gets worse every year. It's just more and more crap, and I understand funding and budgets, and oh, teachers have to pay for supplies in their classroom, but the parents aren't going to be willing to pay for school supplies when they have, like, one kid can basically supply the whole class, or at least half the class with the amount of supplies that they're required to bring. We, like, the only reason we're going to meet the teacher night is so that we can load up our wagon full of all the school supplies and take all that shit there. And it's probably going to take two damn trips because I'm pretty sure we can't fit all of that shit in one wagon. It's just too, ah, God, I I hate back to school. Uh, I hate back to school because of all the hype of back to school. And my wife is, is, you know, she's one of those moms who breaks down and cries every time when those kids go back to school. And I'm just sitting there. (sighs) I'm the big sigh because I'm with them all day when they're at home. She's at work. I don't, I still don't get this. Her, it does not affect her day at all. <laughs> the only thing it changes is that during the summer, she's not taking the boys to school in the morning. I, you know, I pick them up in the afternoon and, but you know, they, she takes the kids to school in the morning. She comes home in the afternoon. She works during the day. I work at night. I'm the one that's home with them all day. I don't get why she gets so worked up about them going back to school. It doesn't affect her day at all. For me, it means I got two less people fighting over whatever the hell during the during the day. And I've got two less people I have to fight with about taking a damn nap. But that's kind of always been my perspective. I, I you know, it's not that I don't like having my boys around, but having four boys in the house and they get up and you know, I've got to sleep. I've you know, I do this and I've got other stuff, and when I've got editing work coming in. You know, trying to do that, trying to do all of these things, it is harder to do when I've got four boys in the house that are being rowdy and maybe don't want to take their nap and maybe they want to fight over who's having what for lunch. And no, that's my ball and that's my motorcycle. And hey, you've been using it all day. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we did come up with a new, we have a new thing for the boys and it, it has more to do with, we made a deal with them over vacation that if they behaved and they behaved after that, they would get, 
you know, designated video game time because we had a real bad problem with them sneaking and sneaking and playing games and downloading games and videos and things and getting on YouTube and stuff on the Xbox that they shouldn't have, you know, watching videos like YouTube videos of video games. They shouldn't be that are just inappropriate for, you know, an, you know, six year old and eight year old. And so we said, you know what? We're going to give them designated. This is your time for video games. Every day you will have a designated amount of time to play video games. And then my wife even went to the point of, hey, let's buy them a game just for them, something they can play so that they're not, you know, down necessarily downloading anything that we can't control. And she went and put in like super parental controls all over the Xbox too. Which we just hadn't really dug into how to get all that set up before. But, you know, so we went from somebody recommending Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which is just a big adventure fighting game. And we're like, um, no, <laughs> she was like, oh, what do you know about this game? It's like World of Warcraft, but superheroes. And I know somebody out there is going to yell at me for saying that. But when you're trying to describe it to somebody with no video game knowledge and her only point of reference for this type of game is World of Warcraft, that's the best I could do to make her understand the type of, of action that's in the game. There's fighting and it's fantasy violence and it's superheroes. And the last thing we need is our boys throwing shit around the house saying, look at me, I'm Captain America and throwing whatever the shit, throwing Frisbees or throwing whatever, or, you know, being whatever superhero and playing and fighting actively. They're rowdy enough on their own. But what we did find was Lego Harry Potter. And because Charlie has been in, been reading the Harry Potter books and he's, I think he's actually at book four right now, book four or book five. I don't remember. Uh, we decided, you know what? We're going to get him Lego Harry Potter and get an extra controller so they can both play because it is a two person game and let them play this and give them the opportunity to be able to you know, have this game that's theirs and let them have a thing and say so every night you can play, you know, Harry Potter and they're really excited for it. But it's also the, you have to behave and we set the ground rules. Like when school starts, you've got to get your homework done. You've got to get your reading logs done. You know, the house has to be clean or you don't get your game time. And you know, it's, it's been a really good motivator to keeping them behaving because they really look forward to that game time. And if, you know, they do something and I, I kind of had the conversation with them. It's like most of the things that you get in trouble for are dumb. It's, you know, not picking up your, your room. It's not. It's, it's, you know, not getting your, your dirty laundry together so that I can wash it. It's, you know, fighting with your brother over something, you know, it's being bossy. It's, it's, but it's, it's little dumb things that they blow way out of proportion that get them in trouble fighting, whatever. (laughs) And they're, they're realizing it's like, is this, this one little thing? It's a really dumb thing to get in trouble for. Do you want to, is it worth losing your game time over this? Or you can just do your chores and you get to play the video games that you want to. So it works out much better. And they're slowly realizing and they're really kind of coming into, hey, if I don't screw up, if I don't fight, if I listen and do what I'm told and yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, do all that then, and be respectful and not be a pain in the ass, then I get to play video games. And I didn't get to play video games before I got in trouble. So now I can play video games as long as I don't get in trouble. Well, they're really actually finally, I think this is finally the thing we've we've got that figured out what is it, what does it take to keep them from just going off? So I'm excited. We're excited about this. And honestly, Rihanna and I are both like, we want to, I think we're, probably, we both agreed we want to play the game half because we're curious about it because it, it, it looks fun. It's, a, I mean, it's a kid's game. It looks fun, but it also, it's one of those, like, 
we want to figure it out a little bit to help the boys play because they don't have, you know, it's video games. Now it's very much a, you're thrown in there and figure it out. Well, they, they haven't had the video game experience we have where you have to sit there and tinker with the game and figure it out. And you fail 50 times before you learn the game dynamics. And then, you know, and like, and Charlie's kind of had a bunch of time where he's like, Oh, I don't want to play. I don't, it's too hard. I can't like, I don't know what I'm doing. I was like, that's the point. You got to figure it out. And, you know, I told him, I was like, mom didn't like Skyrim when she started. She really didn't want to play it because it's, you know, having to learn how do I do this and what am I doing? How do I do? And all the, how the, what the, who the, all that, that you have to figure out. Well, when you're first learning it all, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. You know, you have to go through the, I don't know what the hell I'm doing stage. And after you get through the, I don't know what I'm doing stage, then you're like, Hey, I'm cool. (laughs) And you got, yeah, that's, that's kind of where you're at. And right now they're in that, I don't really know what I'm doing stage, but I think, you know, in another week or so, they'll figure out that kind of dynamics of the game. They'll figure it all out. They'll beat some levels. So go back and figure out other things because it's one of those games where you can go back and redo things and discover like as you advance and you get new powers and new spells and stuff in the game you can go back to old levels and do things you couldn't do before and so they're they're kind of learning that and i think once they really get into it they'll they'll have more fun with it but there's that but i'm hoping that once school starts they really you know that this still continues to work as an incentive for them. Hey, I get to play our games. We don't get to play. We don't do our homework. So I got to get my homework done. <laughs> like I got to eat my dinner. I got to get homework done. I got to make sure my room is clean and the house isn't a disaster. And it's before mom gets home. <laughs> so all of this, you know, mom walks in, the house is a mess. Homework's not done. There's no video games because they've got to get their homework done and all that. And it's like, Oh, well, sorry. Your video game time got taken up by homework. But I'm, I'm, I think this is work. This is finally, it's, I mean, it's still only been the first week. It's been a few days, but you know, so far I'm, I'm hopeful. So I, maybe I'll keep you updated on this later. If this, this Harry Potter experiment fails, <laughs> but I'm trying to keep it shorter because I'm tired. <laughs> That's a lot of it. I'm tired, but cause I, man, I know I'm sorry. I know I got really long winded the last few weeks, uh, just cause I can, but I'm going to try and, and keep them shorter. I'm going to try and, and, and condense the show down in my ramblings a little bit, but I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to play some promos for some totally relevant stuff and <laughs> I'll be right back with another recommendation for you. Little something that totally makes sense. And I've got a jackass of the week. So I'll be right back after this break. Hello, it's Heather from the Sunshine and Power Cats podcast. From the 11th to the 17th of August 2018, I am hosting the second Sunshine Summit. It's a week of live streams with amazing content creators and the theme of celebrating connections. All the details for the upcoming summit, as well as replays from the first summit we held in March, can be found on the sunshineandpowercuts.com website on the Sunshine Summit 2018 tab. So check it out, and if you know the guests, we'd love for you to come and celebrate with us. But if they're new to you, come along and learn more about them during the summit. We look forward to celebrating with you. Hi, this is Emily Prokop from The Story Behind which is a podcast about the extraordinary history behind the ordinary. What does that mean? It means whenever my ADHD gets the best of me, I begin to wonder the stories behind everyday objects. This is the story behind sporks, behind chewing gum, behind hoodies, places. This is the story behind Mount Rushmore. This is the story behind speakeasies or people. This is the story behind Uncle Sam. This is the story behind Betty White. Everything has a backstory, and from what I've noticed from doing the show, not everything is as plain and simple as history books may have you believe. Join me Mondays and Thursdays on your favorite podcast app or at the storybehindpodcast.com. And thanks for listening. So, 
second recommendation of the day. Voila. la. So, as I may or may not have mentioned, I honestly don't remember at this point, Emily, from the story behind, has written a book. She has actually uh, now had written a book of the story behind. And it is now available for pre-order on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble. And I believe it is due to release in October. I don't know exactly the date, but it's due out in October. I have already pre-ordered mine because I'm a good friend and all those fun things. And honestly, I want to see the book. And it is full of stories from, I believe she said there's about 50 chapters of, like the show says, the extraordinary history of the ordinary. And some of them are topics she's covered in the show, which she's expanded on, and then others are completely different topics, some of which she may cover at future point in the show, or some that are just going to be kind of, this is just for the book. And I'm excited for it. Uh, but go to the story behind book.com or search for it on uh, Amazon or Barnes and Noble. And I recommend searching for Emily Prokop because there's a lot of other books that are the story behind something. And it, it's kind of like a, this for, you know, insert item here for dummies. There's a lot of the story behind this thing or that thing or this thing or that thing. So it does get kind of buried in the search. So I suggest searching for Emily Prokop or just it's easier. Go to the story behind book.com and you can click there and order it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble for when it is released in October because she's awesome and you should totally support her. And my understanding is as more people order it on Amazon, the price kind of comes down. So I'm really hoping for that. <laughs> Either way, I'm, I'm, I've got mine pre-ordered. I'm excited. It's a great show. Um, and she's just awesome. So check that out. I bet you're really getting tired of hearing that sound. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just there were so many little bits and pieces and segments in this show. I really felt like I needed to separate them, and that's the best little separator I had. That's not 100% completely obnoxious. Mild. It's probably like 85% obnoxious. But <laughs> that's what I got right now. I don't have the time to go and look for new new bumpers and sound effects at the moment. Anyway, before I wrap things up, I do want to kind of. I'm throwing a thing out there and it's something I kind of pitched and it's something that literally came to me in the last few days of just kind of, I, I, I've said before that, you know, podcasting is an addiction. <laughs> I've straight up called it an addiction that once you get into it, you really don't want to let go and you come up with one show and you, you get into your show and then you come up with tons of other ideas for other shows. And so I kind of, you know, I, I mentioned back at episode 100 that I wanted to start doing guests and maybe start doing something with interviews and things like that. And especially with like the second sunshine summit coming up and I've done a couple of guest spots on other shows recently that really makes me want to try doing more of that. And I realized that especially after like the Mike Jolitz episode was the only one I've done since then minus, you know, way back when I've had my family on, I've never done any other interviews on the show is despite wanting to. And it just kind of felt like, especially with like the, the episode with Mike, that it's a much more different sort of format. It's a very different thing to do that. And I realized that for the most part, I can't do that in this show the way it's kind of it exists because the show is pretty much about me. It's totally it's all about me. <laughs> Let's just say it. Uh, but it, it, it's me emptying my brain out into your ears. And so, but I wanted to do that and I want it and it's very much in a the vacuum left currently in the absence of the pod stuff. Because, you know, Perry and Lindsay did what I wanted to do. Just sit down with podcasters and have a conversation and talk and maybe talk about your show, maybe talk about whatever the hell we're going to talk about. But they were doing that. And right now with, you know, the everything going on with them and with, you know, the the cancer treatments and all of the different things that are going on with them, 
there's kind of this hole left behind. Not that I'm trying to steal their show, but I felt like I couldn't do this show. I couldn't do that show while my friends were doing that show. But it's kind of, it's, it's more of the, I'd like to have opportunity and more of an excuse to talk to my friends on a non chat, on a non like text based thing. And, you know, chatting with, with Heather from Sunshine and Power Cuts leading, you know, getting ready for the Sunshine Summit. We kind of realized like it's so much nicer when we can just like talk and have a conversation and not be sitting there, you know, having to type or misspellings or whatever, you know, how does that spelled and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's harder to communicate in text in when you're wanting to just actually have a conversation. And so it's nicer to do that. And to, so I kind of want to do something like that. And I've got a handful of people that have totally volunteered to do this. And I don't, and it's not just like I said before with incorporating interviews into this show, which I'm just kind of giving up on that. I think it's not going to be like a, Oh, this week I'm talking to this person. And next week I'm talking to that person. It may be a once a month thing. It may be a every a couple of weeks. I don't know. However, the hell many people actually feel like fucking talking to me. I don't know, but it's something I want to do. And I think I'm probably going to start just kind of a side podcast doing that. And that will be maybe, who knows, it'll probably be a hell of a lot more popular because more people are interested in other people other than me. I think that is, that is what takes people away from this show is like, oh, he's just fucking talking about himself. God, fuck, screw this guy. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I, I really want to, I'm going to, I think I'm going to really move forward starting this other show. Granted, it's like, oh, I'm going to start this other show and I want to start a, you know, podcast editing business. And I think it's, I think that show will probably facilitate that a little bit better. But yeah, I, that's what I want to do. So just throwing that out there, getting it. I don't know. It feels like things feel more real when I say them behind the mic rather than just, you know, putting it up on Twitter. If you hear that jingle going on in the background, my alarm is going off right now. <laughs> I have my alarm on my phone going off on the other side of the room, and I don't want to stop. It's just way over there. Okay, it finally stopped. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's what else I've got going on. It's, I kinda, it's just, I wanted to throw this out there. <laughs> Get it out in the world. Do you, would you listen to me talking to other people? You know, do you think this is a good idea? And some of you, I totally know what you think already. <laughs> and like I said, I have some volunteers. I have some people that are like totally, Hey, I would totally be a part of that. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know. Hit me up, uh, Facebook or Twitter at odd dead out. Tell me what you think. Should I move forward with this whole idea? Would you listen to my, to listen to me talking to other people? You know, you apparently listen to me by myself, but who knows? <laughs> who do you think I should talk to? How about that? That's another one. Or if you're a podcaster and, and would actually want to talk to me, fuck, I don't know why, uh, hit, hit me up. Uh, uh, show at odd dead out podcast.com. I, I have to remember that email. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know, check out, or, or you can, there's a little contact tab. Go to odd dead out podcast.com. Uh, leave me a comment in the show notes. Leave me a, a little message in the, in the little box there on the side. You know, there's the email and the Facebook and the Twitter and all of the, all of the things are there on the page. But, now that you've done all that and you've subscribed to the show, which is on Apple Podcasts and the Google Google Podcasts, and I'm on Spotify now, so you should totally check me out on Spotify. Got all that crap out of the way. It's time for the Jackass of the Week. So I actually had to look this time because there was it was one of those like I, I've missed it for so long. I just felt like it was necessary. It was necessary to come back. And oh man, there's never a shortage of stupid people. Man drives SUV into river to save money on a car wash. 
and instantly regrets it. <laughs> Man, the, the, there's no limit to, to cheap people. So a Chinese man drove his Land Rover into a river in order to save the basically three bucks on a car wash, which I don't see how that would work because, you know, river water has dirt and crap and whatever in it. It's unless you're going down to the car, down to the river with a bucket of soap. I don't see how the river is going to save. I, I'm not understanding this plan. I do not understand this plan at all. Well, aside from that's a bad plan, uh, apparently just after he pulled into the river, uh, <laughs> he got stuck because somewhere upstream, they opened up the floodgates in the dam and the water level pretty much took completely, completely ran over his car almost instantly. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't only just a bad idea it was absolutely bad timing and you know what that's what you fucking get for being so damn cheap <laughs> it's uh really i mean it's okay i don't it's it's 20 i don't know how to pronounce 20 you on 20 that's 20 bucks chinese it's three bucks american um, seriously, if you can afford a fucking Land Rover in China, how the fuck cheap, how, you know, you can afford to fucking wash it. Really? I mean, the hell, it's a Land Rover. That is not a cheap car by any stretch of the imagination. Even the shittiest Land Rover is still a fucking expensive car. And you are going to be too cheap to actually go to a car wash. Oh, I'm just driving to the river. Da, 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 da. Oh, shit. Flood. Well, I guess now the fucking river cleaned out your interior as well. Because they flooded your fucking car because you're a dumbass. <laughs> oh, I cannot believe... And I'll have, I should be able to get the video up in the show notes at, you know, your app may not show it, but go to the show notes at odddadoutpodcast.com. I'll hopefully have the video up in there for you to see this dumbass getting his fucking uh, Land Rover stuck in the fucking water. Oh my God. What the hell? How cheap? How cheap are you? Seriously, you drive a Land Rover. You can afford a fucking car wash. Just go to the car wash or get a fucking hose. Really? At what point did this seem like a good idea? What if you screw the river flooding you? What if you just got stuck? You know, <laughs> there's no way this was a good idea. <laughs> but, uh, I just... Uh, I can't believe I I can't even say I can't believe it because A it happened. B I'm sure I have family that have done this. There's a, a million fucking rivers in Arizona. I you know, I, I'm a hundred percent sure that somewhere one of my cousins has washed their truck by driving it into a river, but we didn't do it when the water was so damn high. And you sure as hell didn't do it because they were cheap. <laughs> and it was probably, you know, cheap car. <laughs> didn't drive a Land Rover into a river in a flood zone <laughs> to save three bucks. You don't, you're not saving enough to be worth it. Ah, okay, enough, dumbass. Or should I say, jackass. Uh, so much, so much stupidity. Oh, thank you so much. I'm back to form. I'm, I'm getting back. Vacation threw me, but I'm back and then we're, we're gonna, we're gonna be rolling and rolling and rolling and I think next week school's gonna be back and I'll be back to kind of standard procedure and not wanting to, you know, smack my kids upside the head. Thank you for, for listening and putting up with my stuff. If you have a guest or somebody that you, or you wanna be on the show, hell, for this whole little side thing I'm thinking about doing. Uh, hit me up. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram at Odd Dad Out. 
uh, uh, show at odddadoutpodcast.com. Sounds like I don't know where all of my, my things are, doesn't it? Of course, you can catch all of the past episodes. Subscribe to the show, odddadoutpodcast.com. Uh, if you're so inclined, leave a review because you're awesome. I, just because I want to know what you think. Tell me what to think. Or you could do it in any of those other places. Um, but because I'm blanking the rest of the stuff, so I'm going to sing like an idiot. And <laughs> but thank you again. And because I'm still an idiot, <laughs> I'm still Adam Higgins, the idiotic odd dad out. Thank you and good night.